Sounds like football, baby. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the Fantasy Football Smackdown. I'm your host, Kyle August. You can follow me on Twitter at KyleMonth8. It is Tuesday, September, what is it? The 21st, so we're heading into week three of the NFL season. Man, hopefully you guys have had a successful uh, two-week stretch here to start the year, but regardless, do not fret. We're still early on here in the fantasy season, but uh, it's always, it always feels better to be 2 0 But uh, just uh, full disclosure before I get started here, I am recording this prior to the Monday Night Football game. Don't really expect any waiver wire implications in that game, but uh, if there are any, adjust accordingly. But uh, with that being said, on today's podcast, we're diving into the waiver wire ads that you need to make ahead of week three. Uh, some of these players might already be on your team if you're checking out waiver wire sniping every Saturday morning on YouTube. Uh, I bring you that show covering all the guys that you can add ahead of kickoff for free stash on the back end of your bench so that you don't need to fight people on the waiver wire for them. But regardless, I'm going to cover all my favorite waiver wire ads this week. Uh, it's a little bit lighter on the wire this week than last, but uh, I still think there's some guys that are worth rostering if they're not already in your league. Um, before we dive into those names, I do want to remind you guys to stay subscribed wherever you're listening to this. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be doing live YouTube shows every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time like we have for the last couple weeks. So bring your questions, come hang out for a bit. And then Memphis is doing that Sunday morning. I don't even know what he's branding at Sunday school. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's we're taking 90 minutes before kickoff, taking all your questions, covering the inactives, breaking news, all that good stuff. So, uh, again, if you're on YouTube, uh, check out those live shows, bring your questions. If you're not already subscribed on YouTube, go hit that notifications button, turn them on, uh, hit that like, subscribe. And uh, let's just jump right into this thing, man. So we're going to do waiver wire top three regardless of position. Uh, again, I said it was a little bit lighter, uh, and I usually use the 50% threshold here, so uh, just take that into consideration as uh, there could be players that are owned in more than 50% of leagues that are available in your, on your waiver wire, so make sure those guys aren't already out there. But here's my priority right now, and uh, this isn't exactly how I wanted to lead it off, but when I looked at uh, who was – there was no Elijah Mitchell this week, so my number one ad – uh, is actually Justin Fields. Even in one QB leagues, I think this kid's going to be a difference maker for fantasy. We see what happened. You know, look at Jalen Hurts. This is a guy that doesn't put up very many passing numbers, but his rushing puts him in that elite tier. I think Fields can be similar to that for fantasy owners. So if you've been streaming, uh, if maybe you just don't like your quarterback situation so far uh, in 2021, I think Fields is the target. Andy Dalton, not a long-term injury, but I think this just cracks the door open for Fields to take over for the Bears. They're at Cleveland this next week. They get Detroit in week four, uh, 51% owned. So he's just at that threshold. Uh, but he's somebody that I think you need to be taking a look at uh, in all your leagues. Number two on this list is James White. A uh, handful of carries, but had the rushing touchdown. Uh, been seeing a good amount of receptions in that offense in both game scripts uh, for the for the Patriots. Uh, even ahead last week against the 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 Jets, White had a great game. And number three, Michael Carter. His ownership has dropped him to 50%, and we saw a pretty decent game as far as touches goes for him uh, in, the Jets, in that Jets backfield, which will remain a little bit convoluted, but I'm still good with Michael Carter as a stash candidate at running back. All right, let's move into each position. Quarterback streamers, I mentioned Justin Fields off the top 51% owned. He's going to be my top ad. Uh, he's my only quarterback. I'm fine streaming him against the Browns, even if it's his first start. But if you can carry two quarterbacks – my favorite straight, straight streaming option this week for a one-week ad is Daniel Jones. I know he's coming off a big game, so he's going to be on people's radar. Um, but he plays the Atlanta Falcons, which is the most important factor for me. The dude's been running the ball. has more rushing yards than Saquon Barkley. Boom. Uh, but I think Jones is going to be in for a really nice fantasy day against the Falcons, whose defense is horrendous. Uh, the, the Giants have 10 days rest as well, playing out a little bit longer week there. Um, playing last Thursday. So I like Jones as a quarterback ad. Derek Carr staying hot, back-to-back 20-plus -back games versus Miami, 26% owned. He comes in at number three. Number four, Ben Rossberger. Damn it, he let me down last week. The yardage was just right there, just under 300, but only the one touchdown. They had the rushing touchdown to Juju, which really screwed fantasy owners uh, on Sunday. He's 37% owned. I'm fine with him as the QB4 uh, if you're streaming. And number five is Teddy B, Teddy Bridgewater. Gets the Jets at home, 17% owned. Had a nice game against the Jags last week. And Superflex, don't forget these names. Tyler Heineke, 4% owned. Uh, I know he played on Thursday, so it might get forgotten. If he wasn't picked up, you need to add him. 
That's Buffalo this week. Tough matchup, but then the Falcons in week four. And Jacoby Brissett with the Tua injury. The matchups are not great for him over the next few weeks. Um, but if two is out, he obviously needs to be rostered. And then stash candidate Trey Lance, 39% on. I'm going to continue to remind you guys on that one. Running backs, uh, these guys are just over to the 50% threshold. So just double check their, your wire for these two gentlemen. Sony Michelle, uh, 60% on. Daryl Henderson came up with an injury. Michelle got all the carries after that uh, in that Rams game on Sunday against the Colts. So I would take a look at Sony Michelle. Now, he is a guy that you're not, even if you can add him right now, that's great and everything. Uh, again, he's not widely available against 60% owned. He plays Tampa this week. So whether it's Henderson or Michelle, you're probably getting those guys out of your lineup regardless. But I'm definitely not starting Sony Michelle this week. He's more of a stash candidate. Uh, and Tony Pollard, 53% owned, just over that threshold. He's going to be featured on a lot of people's waiver wire columns. Even though he's just over my threshold, I want to make sure to note him on here. Um, he would be a fine add as well as he split carries with Zeke 16 to 13. Now it's still in favor of Zeke, but there's definitely been using Pollard over the last couple of weeks. So he needs to be added um, if he's not already. If anything else, just to keep him away from the rest of your league mates. All right, sub 50% ownership. Uh, James White, 42%. I mentioned him earlier at the top. He's He would be one of my, non, my favorite non-QB ads this week. Uh, I like what I saw from him as far as the targets, six targets in both games, even this last week against the Jets where they were playing from ahead the entire game. Uh, he also saw a handful of carries, which is great. And this is a guy that uh, isn't going to be a league winner, but can give you solid production in a, in a flex spot or in PPR as a running back too. And as we approach bye weeks and everything, you're going to want as many running backs as possible. So James White, number one. Number two is Michael Carter. I'm still worried about the, the three-headed monster there, but it looks like that Carter might have taken a little bit of an edge here and knows the head of Tevin Coleman who was third in the pecking order on Sunday. Carter actually saw similar snap share to Ty Johnson, same amount of carries, but Carter had three targets to zero for Ty Johnson. So I like Carter 50% owned. He continues to be a stash candidate for me. Number three, J.D. McKissick. Again, don't forget about these Thursday night guys. I know it seems like forever ago, but McKissick saw a nice uptick in targets while that game script uh, led to him playing on those third downs and that two-minute drill offense. They're at Buffalo this week. I think that continues this week for McKissick. He's a fine th- flex play, and I'm running back two in PPR, 29% owned at Buffalo. Number four, Cordero Patterson. I've been talking about Wayne Gallman on this show. He was inactive again. Still finds super stash in deep leagues, but Patterson seems to be working his way into this offense. Uh, he had less snaps than Davis. He was about half the snaps of Davis, but he had the same number of carries, same number of targets, and put up two touchdowns, 15% owned Cordero Patterson. Gets the Giants this week. He comes in at number four. Number five for me is Peyton Barber. Boy, don't want to add this guy. But if you need to, he's 10% owned. He saw 13 carries to seven for Kenyon Drake with Josh Jacobs out. If you have a guy that's going to get 12-plus carries, you pretty much need to double-check and roster him just in case. But uh, you know what you're getting yourself into with Peyton Barber. A few names here that I noticed are just owned in too many damn leagues. David Johnson, drop candidate, 48% owned. I'm sorry. Get out of here. They're playing all four guys. And Johnson's pretty much a third down back there. Gio Bernard, 21% owned. He's barely seeing any playing time because he's the third down back. And they don't ever end up in maybe third downs. But they're not in two-minute drill offense hardly ever. Um, You can go ahead and drop Gio for any of these guys above, except maybe Peyton Barber if you really don't want to mess around with him. And then Tevin Coleman. I mentioned it with Michael Carter. It seems he slid into that third slot. I don't really love the fact that there's three running backs getting – opportunities there anyway but Coleman it would be my least favorite of the three for sure and being 19% on you can pretty much drop him now for pretty much anyone all right let's move on to the wide receivers uh at the top here again just above the threshold but I want to note him because he'll probably be featured in a lot of places as well Sterling Shepard would be at the top of this list for me he's 57% on 19 targets in two games that led to 16 receptions over 100 yards in week one, 94 yards in week two. Really solid performances for Shepard, who seems to be the lead dog so far there in that Giants passing game. And he gets the Atlanta Falcons this week. So if you didn't already add him last week, per our recommendation, uh, and he's still out there for some reason, you can add him now. He would be the number one wide receiver add. Um, if I had to go with the over 50% guys, just for reference, um, Shepard, Michelle, and Pollard, if I had to rank those guys, um, all three of those guys would be ahead of Justin Fields for me. Um, and I would actually go Shepard, Pollard, Michelle, um, just for reference there. If you're looking for the over 50% group, then it would be the guys I listed at the top of the show. Fields, uh, James White, 
and Michael Carter. So, all right, let's get back to the wide receivers here. Sterling Shepard at the top, 57% owned, but the sub 50% group. Elijah Moore, number one on this list for me, 31% owned. I know the production wasn't great on Sunday, and I don't expect the production to be fantastic this Sunday either against the Denver Broncos, but the writing is on the wall, people. He's been getting decent enough targets, especially when you consider what the Jets have been doing on offense the last couple weeks. I think that will improve with a young quarterback, but Moore got the start on the outside. Jameson Crowder was a healthy inactive, and uh, they played Keelan Cole, who was a special teamer. Uh, that's it. That's the list. Yes, Barrios got his targets in the slot. Uh, Corey Davis on the outside will have better days, but I still think Moore is a guy who could be, you know, maybe not a league winner, maybe not a Justin Jefferson for you guys, but he's going to be a guy that you're going to be playing down the stretch, I think, for sure. Uh, 31% on Elijah Moore. Number two on this list is Darnell Mooney, 45% owned. Second straight week, a lot of playing time, 15 targets in those two games. Uh, he brought in all his targets this last week. Again, he's a guy that was a mid-round pick just uh, a few weeks ago. And I, while I think his stock has dipped, he's a guy that I would look to add and put on my roster. He's seen a lot of playing time. Number three on this list was the guy that was the most productive on Sunday, Rondell Moore, long touchdown pass, actually led the team in yards and targets and receptions but he was fourth in the pecking order amongst wide receivers in snaps. I think he continues to eat away in A.J. Green's uh, snap share. Same thing uh, eating into Christian Kirk's snap, snap share as well, but uh, a little bit of a longer-term play. He's a little bit uneasy to play. Like Mooney, you can kind of plug and play and feel good about it, uh, or at least, okay, that you have some sort of floor. Moore's floor could be zero, um, but uh, the, kid, the kid's super, super exciting. Rondell Moore, number three at Jacksonville this week, 34% owned. Needs to be on some rosters. Number four on this list for me is Tim Patrick. Gets the Jets this week. All this dude does is score touchdowns. He did it again on Sunday despite Colton Sutton sucking up all of the yardage. Patrick is still a wide receiver, three for fantasy owners, um, and especially this week in a great matchup, 22% on Tim Patrick. And number five, copy and paste Tim Patrick right here with Zach Pascal. All this dude does is score touchdowns. I believe three touchdowns in the first two weeks at Tennessee this week, 16% on. Pascal is going to be the man. We saw Paris Campbell out. This last Sunday, even if he's back, I don't care. Pascal's the number two receiver. Once T.Y. comes back, maybe that medals the waters, but we, we don't have to worry about that for a little while here. Uh, deeper league ads. Number one on this list for me is James Washington, 0% owned. Watch that Deontay Johnson news. As of now, all, we've, all I've heard is it's not a serious injury, but we don't know his status. Um, and if he's out, I like James Washington as a deeper league ad. Number two on this list, I'm putting Alan Lazard on here preemptively ahead of the Monday night game. You guys can adjust based off of what he did, but I still like him as the number two receiver in Green Bay. He's 2% on. He's going up against San Francisco next week. Number three, KJ Osborne, number three receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, continues to get targets, 15 targets in two games. They're playing a lot of three wide receiver sets without Irv Smith. Number four, Donovan Peoples-Jones. I know he has not been productive, but he's been the lead uh, backup wide receiver as, as far as playing time goes. And now with Jarvis Landry is supposed to be week to week. Who knows if Odell Beckham Jr. is coming back yet? Uh, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones is 2% on. And number five on this list for deep league ads is Cedric Wilson against the Eagles this week, 1% owned. Amari Cooper popped up this week with a rib injury. Uh, Mike McCarthy said that that was actually affecting him in that Tampa Bay game. So I would expect that Cooper still, still suits up. Um, but with Michael Gallup still on the shelf, uh, Cedric Wilson right now is a deeper league like PPR. Uh, flex, but if Cooper was out for whatever reason and missed this game on Monday night, uh, he's going to jump the board, you know, to maybe close to that Tim Patrick range, maybe just a little bit underneath. Uh, but the other reason I would add Wilson is if you're the Amari Cooper owner, the Cowboys play on Monday night uh, next week in week three against the Eagles. So a little bit of insurance there, even if you're the Cooper owner, try to stash Wilson just in case. He's not a direct replacement by any means, but uh, he's better than nothing. Tight end, oh my God, guys, this has gotten gross quick. Uh, I know we talked a lot about tight ends uh, in, during draft season, and it was always get one of the top three or punt and just deal with the consequences, and my God, you're seeing the consequences. Um, I had a few teams that I know I went out, and I was specific. I was like, I'm getting Kelsey, I'm getting Waller, I'm getting Kittle, which hasn't paid off, but the first two, you feel a lot better, right? Not having to worry about the tight end and streaming has been a godsend for those of you that have hit on those players already because it is tough to find these guys on the wire right now. There just doesn't seem to be a lot out there, especially when you consider some of the situations that you would hope 
could produce uh, some streaming options. There's just too many mouths to feed. Um, you know, you look at Cleveland, or Cleveland, they're splitting between three guys right now. Dallas is split between those two tight ends, Schultz and Jarwin. So it's really difficult. Um, but I'm putting this list together still for you guys. And number one on this list, he is still a question whether he's going to be able to play. They got 10 days off between week two. He was ruled out a little bit later in the week. He wasn't, you know, week one, Evan Ingram was ruled out pretty early on. Um, he was dealing with the injury before the season, and they did not put him on the short-term IR. So you've got to hope that maybe they were expecting him to be back at least by week three. Otherwise, they could have just put him on that IR and had him back as early as week four. But I'm going to hope that Ingram's back this week and against the Atlanta Falcons, I'll take that flyer. 32% owned. Ingram would definitely be a priority ad for me if I'm streaming and just hope to God, fingers crossed, that you can get out of the streaming game because it is extremely tough at tight end right now. Number two on this list is the guy that was here last week, Jared Cook. He did not produce. He did have a touchdown that was overturned by penalty. Um, he's going up against Kansas City, 43% owned. Uh, he would be number two on this list for me as a streamer, but he is actually splitting snaps um, with a variety of uh, tight ends there for the Chargers. But in, an, in a game where they should have to put up a ton of points, I'm going to stream Jared Cook this week. He would probably be my favorite um, if you don't want to deal with the question mark of Ingram. Um and number three on this list for me is Austin Hooper. He had a fine game for, you know, a low, low end one tight end, I, I guess. He's still splitting snaps. Uh, I believe he had four or five catches, which was fine. He had three in week one, 48% owned. It's just take a shot at one of the Cleveland guys. If they're missing all those receivers, Hooper, even in, in Joku in deeper leagues, could be worth a shot. And then deeper league stash at tight end if you want to take a shot on Pat Fryermuth, uh, the rookie tight end for the Steelers. Uh, he's 7% owned. I don't think you can play him right now, but uh, he did split um, with the giving with the edge to Eric Ebron in week one, but then in week two, he split with the edge going to the rook. So this could be a sign that maybe they want a more complete uh, tight end there. And if they ha don't have Deontay Johnson, maybe Fryman with being on, on the field already will lead to a few more targets uh, in an offense that is, is going to be looking for some help. So, there you have it. There are my white, uh, my waiver wire ads heading into week three. It's uh, it's definitely not as enticing. Uh, I would not be spending a ton of money on these guys unless you're like at super flex and need some QB help um, with Heineke and, and Brissett maybe being on the board there. But appreciate you guys checking out today's show. Again, stay subscribed. Rate and review. If, yeah, I haven't mentioned that in a while. If you've been liking what you're hearing so far on the network, we've been dropping a ton of content pretty much every day. Uh, so if you've been liking what you hear so far, on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, whatever the hell it's called these days. If you leave a review, that'd be great. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got another big week ahead. The War Zone's dropping tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, you're going to have the big bet on Thursday, and I'll be back here Thursday night ahead of a barn burner, uh, Texans-Panthers. NFL Network's got to be thrilled about that. Uh, Tyrod Taylor already ruled out, obviously, if you guys are keeping up. But I will be here 7 p.m. Eastern time with some starts and sits and taking your questions. And then again, like I mentioned, on Saturday morning, YouTube only waiver wire sniping, covering all the players that you need to add ahead of kickoff for free. You guys take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your week. Good luck with those waiver claims, and I'll catch you on Thursday. See you.